Welcome everyone. Introduction to disaster management is what we will be talking in this short video. So exactly what is disaster? It can be man-made, it can be natural. So for example, let's say there's a cyclone. What does it happen? It has potentially catastrophic impact on society. Yes, the elements of risk are huge losses, damages, not only on property, but possibly even on lives. Whom does it affect in, in terms of society? It is the poor people who gets affected. What does it goes wrong when the poor people gets affected? It might lead to a disruptions of normal life. Probably development suffers. Even loss of livelihood and life is at stake. <clears throat> let's say about a man-made thing. About let's say a spillage of chemical, hazardous chemical. If what happens? Again, the damage potential is a catastrophic in nature. It impacts Essentially, the society, the elements of risk might be huge, definitely can be huge, probably. Now, what do we do about it? In terms of man-made things, there are certain action plans which can be taken to reduce our losses. Probably, we can lead towards a quick recovery plan in terms of communities, in terms of resiliencies that can be built among communities. There might be losses of life and probably no losses of life also but definitely there's a loss of property if there are any loss can we minimize the loss of loss to the life and property simultaneously can we be more resilient to certain man-made disaster per se let's say spillage of chemical as has been depicted in this particular uh, in, in your screen so what does the element of risk is all about it in terms of natural features uh, it might spoil our our riverbanks definitely if low-lying areas, sea, sea coast, it will harm the flora and the fauna of, of the vicinity, the slopes of the hill. In terms of society, where does it impact? It impacts the daily life, believe it or not, people, the livestock, uh, the huts, the semi-permanent house, the weak buildings, the agriculture, the horticulture, everybody gets impacted. Livelihood tools, equipment, unsecured personal assets, public infrastructure, as the case might be, and what what way to prevent it and how do we go around it scale of disaster depends on the lead time available what is the lead time available the time that is there given in front of you before you can uh, actually react and the event to occur intensity of hazards now this is where it will tell me about what are the hazard and how catastrophic impact or what dreadful impact that particular hazard can have duration is the amount of exposure the amount the amount of time of exposure that will be prevalent <clears throat> because the longer the duration of exposure the more detrimental the impact would be spatial exp extent is the amount of space the periphery of the atmosphere environment that will get impacted Density of population and assets, time of occurrence, vulnerabilities existing in the element at risk is what we talk about it. Hazard simply needs to be understood. Anything related to disaster or emergency is hazard and multiplied by the times of vulnerability. So hazard times vulnerability is equal to your disaster. It's a simple scale of disaster that goes around it. It is amount of time that it gives between the impact and the effect it is the duration of the impact that keeps on keeps on happening it that it is the amount of environment that it gets impacted upon the population uh, which is at risk and the time of occurrence will all tell me the vulnerability factor so vulnerabilities are just nothing but elements of risk times hazard b so that is what we would go around it hazard times vulnerability is disaster elements at risk people livelihood lives livestock flora fauna rural housing stock houses vulnerable crops trees telephone electric poles boats looms working implement personal property electricity water food supplies infrastructure support as the case might be is what we look forward to so yes, we are talking about people. Yes, we are talking about livestock, your household uh, stock, house vulnerabilities, everything that requires for the sustainability of life, your personal property, electricity, everything that depends uh, on the working of a functional society are at risk. 
So aims of disaster management is to reduce, if possible, avoid uh, any losses, both in terms of properties and lives, assure prompt and appropriate assistance to victim as and when on possible, achieve rapid and durable recovery with the passage of time. Disaster management cycle, we can have two events. One is during disaster and one is pre-disaster. In pre-disaster, we can plan for it. During disaster is something which is happening. You look, this is what is happening around here. Emergency per phases, rescue, relief, rehabilitation, reconstruction, integration into the national di disaster planning, mitigation, normal phases. So after there are, there are basically three stages, pre-disaster before the event during disaster is what we are doing about it the rescue the rehabilitation the reconstruction the mitigation the integration and post disaster is what we'll do what we have learned what can be done in a better way fashion post the event so we have before during and after events so it what we are looking into wall uh, well before weeks months if we can do around it if we can plan it out nothing like it but in all probabilities this chances of planning might not be there at all it might sud happen suddenly all by chance so during event what do we go around it just before us or at actual time what can we do we can plan for relief rescue rehabilitation and reconstruction Remember, rehabilitation and reconstruction can be done post-event also or the after impact of the stages of disaster. So three stages, pre-disaster, during disaster and post-disaster. Definition of vulnerability, the extent to which community services, services uh, or geographical area is likely to be damaged. Vulnerability is the propensity of things to be damaged by a hazard as the case might be. What we look forward to. Disaster preparedness aims at minimizing the adverse effect of hazard through effective precautionary actions as the case might be. Ensure timely, appropriate, efficient organization, delivery of emergency responses following the impact of a disaster as the case might be. Do we go across with it and how do we go ahead with the process thereby? So yes, we are talking about disaster preparedness aims, effective precautionary actions and timely, appropriate efficient organization that takes place preparedness is vulnerability analysis mapping to include resources assess strengthening requirements and executives funding for the preparedness must be arranged people cooperation like political leaders elders volunteers the non-governmental organization non-profit organization the societal organization can create some impact in terms of preparation in terms of uh, in interpreting warnings in terms of sensitizing population in terms of taking appropriate action what are we looking into it we are trying to only trying to reduce the destructive potential potentials of the disaster the catastrophic effect of cyclones tsunami earthquake by appropriate action by community participation by having a well done oil machinery to combat disaster Remember, the preparedness uh, framework is all about the vulnerability system, the planning, the institutional fr framework. In terms of vulnerability system, can we talk about the information system, if we can go around it? And how do we go around? So we have to have a uh, vibrant by information system and appropriate response mechanism. Planning is where we talk about the resources basis, the public education and training. The institutional framework is where the community participation would uh, take place in terms of warning system, in terms of rehearsal, in terms of preparing people mentally, psychologically and emotionally for the disaster per se. Disaster response activities are all about warning, evacuation, mitigation, search and rescue, assessment, emergency relief, logistic and supply, communication and information management, survivor response and coping, security, EOC and coordination, expedite rehabilitation and reconstruction per se what do we go across with it and how do we link forward to elements at risk everything in floodplain absolutely yes earthen or soluble structure buried services and utilities food stores crops and livestock as the case might be main mitigation strategies is land use control engineering of strict uh, structures elevation of structures food control structure 
reforestation projects, watershed management, as the case might be. These are the elements that was everything in flood, everything that is there in the vicinity of the disaster, be it property, be it building, be it livestock, be it people, be it infrastructures like electricity, portable water, everything comes under, under elements of risk. Now, how do we try to avoid such thing? Probably proper use of land, engineering of the structures, making the building much more resilient, elevation of the structures, appropriate elevation is required so that uh, flood waters might not get impacted upon flood control system, reforestation process, if there are deforestation happening around planting more trees, making the scenario conducive for the environment to go around it. And the elements, strong winds are lightweight structures in terms of elevated power, utility, communication lines, fishing boats and other maritime industries. Main mitigation strategies are to structurally engineering measures, planting of wind break, breaks as the case might be. Now, these are my structural engineering measures, planting of the wind breaks thereby. With this, I come to an end of this presentation. Thank you for watching this video on the introduction of the disaster management. Thank you very much.